Do you find it challenging to break your bad habits? Do you find it hard to resist temptation and do what you should do? Do you wish to have a more positive mindset but don't know how to achieve it? Hello everyone and welcome to another brand new episode on my channel Wonder Boho Book Club. Today I'll be discussing the book You Are Not Your Brain, the four-step solution for changing bad habits, ending unhealthy thinking and taking control of your life. written by Jeffrey M Schwartz and Rebecca Gladding. Jeffrey M Schwartz MD is an American psychiatrist and researcher in the field of neuroplasticity and its application to obsessive compulsive disorder. Rebecca Gladding MD is a psychiatrist and an author and is the founder and medical director of Mindful Wellness Maui. In You Are Not Your Brain, Jeffrey and Rebecca look at how the brain works. and why we become scared or feel bad they also answer questions like why do we feel overpowered by the brain circuits leading to bad habits or anxieties the book says that people often want to change in their life but can't make it happen the trick is to stop focusing on what you don't want so that the corresponding circuits in your brain get starved of attention and weaken The book details the four steps approach to brain rewiring and teaches the reader how to recognize negative impulses, channel them through intense focus and ultimately lead a more fulfilling life. Before moving ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Part 1. You are not who your brain tells you are. Have you ever felt like you've wasted time doing things you don't want to be doing or like the daily grind is getting to you? All of us slip up at one point or another, and this happens because of tricky messages in the brain that cause us to think harmful thoughts and take wrong turns. On top of that, deceptive brain messages can lead to a lot of harmful issues such as overthinking and anxiety. The most common reason why we feel anxiety is because the messages sent by the brain to our body are often based on fear and negative thoughts. This can lead to a vicious cycle where the brain continues to send these messages without knowing that they are causing harm. A common example of a false message is the feeling of being too fat. The brain has a tendency to overestimate how much body fat it sees. and can make you feel like you are too fat when you are not however in reality people who have a healthy weight don't have any more or less body fat than their overweight counterparts the authors here tell us that although your brain sends you false messages you are not defined by them it is just a part of your body that processes information and gives feedback to the rest of the body Your thoughts and feelings are not an accurate representation of reality and they don't need to be taken seriously. We are all guilty of the occasional slip up. For example, you may have noticed that when a weird thought pops in your head, it can lead to something bad happening. Your brain tricks you into thinking it's your only option, but in reality, we have other choices. Part 2 Brain wiring leads to habit formation. What makes us do things when we know it's not a good idea, like smoke or overindulge in food? Why do we get so hooked on bad habits? It's because a lot of unhealthy behavior seemed to come with a sense of relief from whatever was making us feel bad before. So basically, when we act out those behaviors, It stops feeling bad and starts feeling really good for a little bit, which motivates us to repeat the behavior and turn it into a habit. This very thing happens whenever we pay attention to our brain's deceptive messages. Deceptive messages like "I'm too fat" are usually followed by indulging in a stress habit, like smoking or binge drinking. If we give in to these habits, they become addictive. So, if we respond to false brain messages, we are fueling the fire 
by reaffirming the deceptive messages. We then cope up with the resulting stress by training our brain to think of the unhealthy behavior as a way to calm ourselves. This unhealthy wiring can cause serious problems in the long run. When we are trapped by our brain's deceptive messages, the resulting physical and emotional sensations can feel very real. This can be both disconcerting and a little scary. For example, false messages like I'm too ugly might trigger someone to start excessively dieting or binge purging an eating disorder which would really take a toll on their physical health. When we respond to uncomfortable feelings with thoughts that perpetuate a vicious cycle of deceptive brain messages, we make the pain more intense and long-lasting in the future. Part 3. Neuroplasticity The question that arises now is, how can we get rid of these self-limiting false messages? We all have the ability to train our brain and change the way we think. The scientific name for this phenomenon is neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability to change the function and structure of our brain over time. If you try hard enough, you can learn how to control your brain's wiring. Self-directed neuroplasticity is about carefully focusing your attention to your desired habits as well as being dedicated to follow through on your decisions. By concentrating on your thoughts, you not only prevent yourself from being duped by the deceptive messages that arise, you might also be helping yourself to recognize the true you. When you know how to do this, you are actually reprogramming your brain to become your best ally, not your enemy. To listen to more interesting summaries, Please subscribe to my channel. Part 4. The Four Steps Method. Here, the author talks about the method called the Four Steps to help you change your brain's wiring. The Four Steps will help you reform any unhealthy habits with your own brain circuits by knocking down negative impulses and encouraging positive ones instead. Step 1. Relabeling. One of the first steps to making any change is gaining clarity about what that change should be. You can do so by identifying and labeling your deceptive brain messages. The best way to label your deceptive brain messages is by developing mindfulness. Mindfulness is about becoming aware of your thoughts and starting to challenge them, a process that can involve seeing what's going on inside your head as you do different things. Practicing mindfulness takes some time and effort. However, it's worth the effort since it can help you with your decision-making processes and has a host of other benefits too. Mindfulness is improved by trying to be present in the moment. Find a place for yourself where you won't be disturbed or interrupted. Then, try to focus your attention on your breath as you track it going out and in. If thoughts pop up, note when they come and go without giving them any judgmental attention. Whenever you notice a thought arise, just bring your attention back to your breathing. This can be a helpful exercise for becoming more aware of your thoughts, not only during practicing mindfulness, but during the rest of your day as well. You should be careful at this stage not to assign meaning to your thoughts or make any decisions. Just experience the process of thoughts arising in your mind and then let them go. Once you know what your deceptive messages are, you can name them and use safeguards to protect yourself. The best way to identify what your mind is doing is by taking mental notes of all the thoughts that come, like anxiety or annoying. This helps you to realize that the messages coming from your brain are just thoughts. They are not you. Step 2. Reframing. Once you know what to look for in your deceptive thoughts, you can alter the importance of these thoughts and their influence on you by using a method called reframing. Our brain often sends us false messages that are not true, which can lead to us behaving in a detrimental way. 
Reframing helps us understand this and prevents us from reacting automatically to the false deceptive messages. You can reframe your thoughts by using statements like, "It's not the real me; it's just my brain playing tricks on me." One common mistake people make is to group information in extremes, like something is either perfect or ruined. This type of thinking is known as a black and white thinking. Another type of thinking, known as catastrophizing, involves people worrying that the happening or not happening of an event is the end of the world. This happens especially when we overanalyze about what could potentially go wrong with certain situations in life. Reframing is a great way to help yourself get rid of such destructive thinking and realize that your harsh opinion isn't really the truth, but simply your opinion, which can be changed. Understanding this will help you be more peaceful and calm. Step three: refocusing. Frequently, tricks of the mind and destructive impulses start taking over our lives. We may find ourselves getting stuck in some unhealthy behavior, such as overeating. The third step is to refocus on a productive task. This can help you shake off destructive tendencies and keep them from impacting your success. Refocusing is a tactic that helps you stay in control when you're feeling bad. The idea is to take your mind off the problem and redirect it to something positive. If you want to refocus, you will need to find an activity that keeps your attention. It can be hard to find new things to do to shift your focus when you're lost in those deceptive messages in your head. So make a list of things you can do before the negative thoughts start crowding your brain. Get back in touch with yourself by doing a mindful walk and letting some fresh air fill your lungs. Try hitting the gym or reading or reconnecting with your friends. It's a good idea to make a list of all the things you could do and keep the list handy. You should try to refocus even when the thoughts are trying to make you focus on the negative. A lot of people think that refocusing is nothing but keeping your deceptive thoughts at bay or somehow removing them. But it's actually about managing your response to these thoughts and emotions and allowing them to be there without letting them take over. If you try to fight your thoughts, you are only giving them more attention. And strengthening their negative effects in your brain. If you want to get out of that thought loop, focus on things that make you happier and create a better mind state. Step four: Revaluing. Revaluing is the last step of reprogramming your brain to be healthy again. This involves taking a step back, evaluating the big picture instead of just reacting to negative thoughts and emotions. That are based on incorrect perceptions. In order to start revaluing, you will have to realize that you have been living your life based on the narrow point of view of deceptive brain messages. Example: I am not lovable. Essentially, revaluing means to change the way you view your life. This can be achieved by seeing what is working in favor of you and embracing it, or by focusing on the good things that happen. And being grateful for them. Rethinking is all about learning how to treat yourself well, so you can care for yourself and make decisions based on love instead of fear, anger, sadness, or other deceptive emotions. Actionable steps. The next time you want to procrastinate, just remember to go through the four steps. Number one, relabel your urge. For example, I'm feeling a strong desire to watch Netflix right now. Number two, reframe by remembering why this urge is bothering you. Watching Netflix helps me to divert my attention and temporarily escape my anxiety that I won't be able to finish my task within the deadline. Number three, refocus. Do something productive from your list of activities. Number four, revalue. Remember that this impulse to procrastinate is just a false message from your brain, and you should not try to take it seriously.
Conclusion Your brain often sends out fake messages that lead you to act in a way that's not good for you. However, there are ways you can change how your brain works and avoid those destructive patterns. Break down the associations between unhealthy thoughts and habits by following the four steps of relabeling, reframing, refocusing, and revaluing, and enjoy a healthier, more productive life filled with joy. Thank you for watching this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe. Your likes, shares, and comments are highly appreciated. See you soon in our next episode.